Ladies and gentlemen, the Shrek Game and Com video, we're going to be discussing a couple of pieces of Xbox One news. We're going to be rolling them together because there are actually a couple of interesting tidbits. Specifically, Halo 6, they've confirmed, well, yeah, it's already pretty planned. Um, they already know what's coming for Halo 6. We'll talk about that in a moment, though. But first of all, Phil Spencer is going to be ending third-party exclusive games for the Xbox One. He has certainly hinted at this previously, but in a recent interview of IGN, he has made it clear that he is not a fan of third-party exclusives. And this is why the PlayStation 4 is going to be having, well, exclusive content with, say, Black Ops 3 rather than how Microsoft managed to do so with a lot of the Xbox 360 titles and Call of Duty. We know that Call of Duty and Xbox were almost synonymous with one another. Now, I know what you're going to say, but dude, Rise of the Tomb Raider, right? It's coming to the Xbox One, that's why people are so upset. However, there are some differences here. Specifically, Rise of the Tomb Raider would probably have never happened if Microsoft had actually intervened and said, well, we're actually going to be helping a publish the game and also help develop the game so in fact what they're doing is they're putting their own money and manpower into the game and therefore it's not like they've just said hey we're gonna give you this cash to basically give us like you know 30 minutes of extra first uh, single player you know content or something like that instead Phil Spencer believes and to be honest with you I 100% back him on this one Phil Spencer believes that Microsoft are much better to actually rely on its own developers, its own brand, and say, you know what, we're gonna we're gonna be pushing our own games like the Gears of War, like the Halos, like the Forzas, and actually have a very reliable stream of IPs that they themselves own. Now, there are some other brand deals or exclusives, I guess you could say, that Microsoft have. For example, EA Access, which is actually not a bad deal. But EA Access is a case where Sony just didn't want it. They just said, you know what, we don't think this is good for gamers. We don't want to go this route. And Microsoft said, hey, you know what, we actually really like this idea. We're going to go for it. And I actually think that for those who are interested in sports games in particular, EA Access is actually a pretty nice option. Personally, I'm not a big fan of EA Access because the games that I've been interested in, by the time they've actually come out to EA Access, I've already bloody well bought them anyway, um, but that's just me, you know, that's just how I roll. However, for quite a few people, EA Access is actually a really good option. There are other examples, of course, like we know about Fallout 4 mods, which are coming first to the Xbox One. Um, so right now, Sony have a pretty good lineup of first-party games, there's no doubt about it. They have studios such as Naughty Dog, and if you say you've got Naughty Dog working for you, it's really hard to actually criticize your first party lineup because you know they, they they do produce system selling games but microsoft do want to focus on that and i think that's a really good idea because it means that that means you've got well a good batch of ips which is yours you can leverage them however you want you can release them on any system you want and it also ties in rather nicely with something that frank o'connor and bonnie ross have said from 343 they have said that they have already laid what they consider to be the, the fictional foundation, the groundwork for the next 20 years of Halo. In fact, Phil Spencer has said this a while back. Um, he has said that Halo could theoretically last another 20 years as long as they don't butcher it somehow, you know, as long as they don't screw it up, which I don't think they will. And uh, O'Connor has said, Frank O'Connor has said, and I quote, We do kind of know what's going on to happen in the next game pretty well at this point. We're doing some serious real planning and even writing on the next game already and that's a luxury. We've never been in this position before. So we both know at a very high level what's going to happen in say 10 years from now, but at a very granular level, we know what's going to happen in the next game and that's a great feeling for me. Personally, out of quote, I'm actually really looking forward to the next Halo game, I must say. I really enjoyed the Master Chief Collection. I know there were some problems with the, the multiplayer side of things, but you know what? I actually don't mind that because I'm not really a multiplayer dude when it comes to, like, console FPS. It's just not for me. I'm not saying it was bad. I just, I personally don't like it. I personally prefer 
well, the storyline for Halo. I actually really love it, and I've said this a couple of times previously. I think some games, um, you know, you just feel they're really special when it comes to storyline. I actually really like Halo's story, so I'm I'm actually really happy about this. We know Guardians, of course, is going to be released in, on October 27th. There's actually an awful lot of games coming out over the next couple of months, aren't there? You've got Fallout, Rise of the Tomb Raider, Halo 5, and that's just listing a few. Now, before anyone starts jumping up and down, just because they know that the story, you know, from a very high level is probably complete, they know, you know, Master Chief or whomever is going to do this, and, you know, Bob is going to do that, what have you, it doesn't mean that they're thinking of annualizing and serializing the franchise. It's not going to become Assassin's Creed at the end of the day, but... I think it's a really good idea if you've got like a high level overview for this stuff. If you're trying to create a universe, well they, I say try, they already have with Halo. I mean, let's face it, you've got um, bloody, uh, even the TV miniseries which they've released, which is Forward Until Dawn, which is worth watching if you would like to. It's pretty good in my opinion. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. It's a bit of a rolly one, but it's worth it. Um, but for now, I'm going to get going. Take care and uh, have a great night.